y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about five things I'm glad I did not miss out on along the PCT. So the PCT in itself is obviously an amazing trail. It's got beautiful views and if you just stick to the PCT, yeah, you're going to see a lot of cool stuff. But there were a whole lot of things that were awesome that were just slightly off trail, whether it be a place or a natural feature. But I've narrowed that list down and today I want to tell you about five of those things that I think are worth the side trek to go enjoy. So going in order from south to north, so if you're heading in the Nobo direction, you will hit these in the order I talk about them. Number one is Deep Creek Hot Springs, and that is at mile 308. There is nothing like hiking all day, especially in the desert, and then you get to these pools of water where you can go swimming. And they have different temperatures, so some of the pools are really cold, and then you've got like some warm areas where the cold and hot are mixing together, and then you've got the hot pools. And those are the ones that I like because I'm so cold natured. It feels really good to soak your muscles because at this point, you know, they're still sore at mile 300. You kind of have some trail legs, but you don't have your real trail legs. One of the coolest things about this area, other than of course, like having a natural hot tub on trail, is that they have these huge tadpoles. I mean, these things were ginormous. They say that camping is not permitted there. If you read online, if you check gut hooks, all of those sources will tell you camping is not permitted. However, locals do it, through hikers do it. I'm not telling you to do it or that it's okay. I'm just telling you when you get there, if you're like, Dixie said you can't camp here. Well, you're not supposed to. And actually in 2016, uh, some of the through hikers reported being fined $175 for camping there. So you're not supposed to camp right there. Actually, a mile radius is the prohibited area for camping. I think the closest to a parking area is about two miles. So um, it's not like somebody can just drive up and ticket everybody, but just letting you know. This is considered a clothing optional area so there is a lot of nudity there if that is offensive to you then you know you might not want to go um, it's not required that you take your clothes off you know i, I kept mine on um, but just letting you know don't be surprised if you see some moons floating around and then one other thing about deep creek hot springs that i feel like i should disclose um, but this is not to scare you away i just want to let you know uh, apparently back in like the 90s there was a case of an amoeba that was attacking brain tissue. So yeah, a brain eating amoeba, which is like everyone's worst nightmare. So while it's not very common that that has been an issue, it's very, very rare. In fact, um, they do suggest that you don't like submerge yourself underwater and that you don't drink water directly from the pools. They do have other water sources. And if you have the Gut Hooks app, it'll tell you, you know, don't drink the water directly from pools, but there is an area where you can get water that is, you know, safe. Of course, still filtered. But anyway, not to scare you away, definitely didn't know about that when we visited the springs and all of us were submerging ourselves and, you know, I've no, heard no reports of anyone having an issue with that. So anyway, it was a great place to stop. I highly recommend it. It's so close to the trail that even if your day isn't ending in that area, it's definitely worth getting off taking a little break during the middle of the day and then trucking on. Number two is Casa de Luna and that is at mile 478. Casa de Luna is the home of Terry and Joe Anderson. They are longtime trail angels in Green Valley, California. So there really is no good place to stay there in town. So they put hikers up at their house. They let them camp back in the Manzanita forest. I mean, it literally is just Manzanita for days back there. It's a well-known hiker vortex because it's just such an awesome place and they are so hospitable that hikers, you know, end up waking up two days later and going, oh my God, I just took two zeros at Casa de Luna. So when you first get there, I mean, I didn't even like get there yet. I just, we got to hitch into like a gas station in town and Terry saw some homeless looking folks with packs on. So she came right over with her van and said, get in, you're coming to my house. And she gives everybody a hug. So when she first meets you, you got to get a hug from her. Then she takes you back to the house where you can set up camp. You get to paint rocks. You get to have slushies. She gives you some loner clothes to put on these cool Hawaiian tops. They have a heated shower there. They've got a propane tank hooked up to an outdoor shower. They feed you dinner at night. And that's when the only rule that I know of was seen. And that was you can't hold your plate over the food while you're serving yourself. Otherwise, Terry's got a yardstick that she'll whoop people with. And it's really hard to do. You're, you're amazed at how many people she says, don't do this, and then you find yourself doing it. After dinner, and once it kind of starts to get dark, Terry turns on some music, and there is a dancing, I won't really say contest, but to earn your PCT 
through Hiker Bandana, you've got to dance for her, and then you know she awards you the bandana. And the last thing you got to do while you're at Casa de Luna is stand in front of the sheet that everyone signs their names on for the class of whatever year it is. And she takes a picture and gives everyone their final surprise. But I can't tell you what that is. That is a long time PCT through Hiker secret. So you'll just have to go hack the PCT and visit Casa de Luna to find out more about that. Now they also cook breakfast, but because I knew Casa de Luna was such a vortex, I decided that I wanted to be good. You know, I enjoyed myself there for pretty much a full day. Uh, so I wanted to get out on the first shuttle and they actually shuttle you back to the trail. So I left out early before breakfast, but I've heard that it's amazing. Joe cooks pancakes and anyway, you just can't miss that stop. They are so hospitable and it really is just a fun time. Number three is Mount Whitney at mile 767. To get to the top of Mount Whitney, you're going to travel eight miles from the PCT and then eight miles back. So it's a 16 mile round trip. For most folks, it ends up being a zero day, even though you're actually hiking. And I would say that Mount Whitney was probably the most difficult climb because you're going up to 14,505 feet. So even though it's only a 16 mile round trip, it's still pretty exhausting because of how much elevation you gain. And even though it was the most I exerted myself on a zero day, it was definitely worth it because the views for Mount Whitney are just amazing. You've got a 360 view and plus you're bagging the highest point in California and the highest point in the lower 48. It was my first 14 or so, my first mountain over 14,000 feet. The group I was around at the time suggested that maybe, you know, we should all do a sunrise summit. So we went for it. Now with 2017 being such a high snow year, it got a little sketchy at times, but it was pretty amazing. And then, you know, I sat there and drank some coffee and took a nap and got to enjoy the whole day at Mount Whitney. So that was pretty neat. But either way, I think that it was probably the best view I had the whole trail. So if you get the chance and you're not in a rush definitely check out Mount Whitney. Number four is a terminal geyser at mile 1347. It's in Lassen Volcanic National Park. Now it's actually a fumarole or a geothermal steam vent but everyone refers to it as a geyser. So it's only a little more than a quarter mile off trail. I think it's actually 0.3 miles and it's definitely worth the side trip. I mean it's neat. You could see the water boiling and steam going everywhere and and you know I was like mm, maybe it'll be underwhelming but it really was worth it. Now I will tell you if you've got small children you definitely don't want to let them just run on up there because they will get boiled alive if they fall off into the water. Downstream a bit Perk was even taking the temperature of the water and you know doing his little science experiments and uh, it, it was some pretty hot water. But it was something different something I'd never seen so I recommend checking it out. Number five is Little Crater Lake at mile 2070. Now I didn't get to see the real Crater Lake very well because of all the fire and the smoke. So Little Crater Lake was kind of like a second shot at that for me. It's about 45 feet deep, but it is spring fed crystal clear water that's actually like a pond. Apparently it stays about 34 degrees in the summer. I didn't take the temperature of it, but it was pretty cold when I stuck my hand in it. And if you like swimming, this would be a great place to swim if you don't mind that cold water, but I, I hate the cold water. But it was very beautiful there, very serene, and definitely worth the quarter mile side trip to Little Crater Lake. Because I'm a through hacker and I would be a bad through hacker if I didn't put something in here about food, I had to give y'all a bonus, and that is do not miss the buffet at Harris Casino in South Lake Tahoe. Now, the buffet costs about $30 per person, but when you have your hiker hunger, you're gonna get your money's worth. I mean, we kind of have an unfair advantage, I think. They had all kinds of food, basically anything you could ever want. They even had crab legs and just gobs of desserts. So if you don't stop there, you're gonna be robbing yourself of probably the best food experience you can have on trail. Well, that's all I have for y'all today. And if you've got any of those do not miss places that you're just dying to tell me because I left him out, Feel free to do that in the comments below. One example might be like old snowy up in the Goat Rocks wilderness. I didn't get to check that out unfortunately because they decided to blast the day that we were coming through and we couldn't take that side trail. So I'd love to hear what y'all have seen that you feel like folks just don't need to miss out on. And thank y'all so much for watching and we will see y'all next time.